you want a car that you can't afford, well, here's a video how to help you out. And I'm going to make sure you guys know how to make coins and get all the cars that you want all year. Okay, so this is the November edition of how to become a millionaire here in NHL 22 Hockey Ultimate Team. I want to help you out and give you the best tips that you're going to need because there's actually some new things that we didn't know last month. So it's going to be some new things, of course, that are still saying the same, but some new things that are very important to know that will make you a lot more successful in making coins in this game. Okay. So, starting off right now, if you guys haven't already, though, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you want more content like this in the future, more coin-making tips, I can definitely help you out, all right? But let's move on to Hockey Ultimate Team right now. So, you get into Hockey Ultimate Team, you see some things, right? You see Rush, you see Objectives, you see Squad Battles, you see Challenges, you see Rivals, you see Hut Champions, you see Sets, and you see the Auction House and the Packs, okay? So... What you want to do now is, first things first, if you want to get basic coin, basic, basic just coin making ability, I think the most simple way to make coins is through squad battles. I really do. And the reason why, you don't have to play too many games. You really, really don't. You get coins for playing the squad battle games, along with you eventually getting rewards from squad battles. So, uh, for instance, uh, I believe if you can go, you can't look at the previous week. If you play about give or take like for pro one you probably need to play about you play a superstar and you win by the amount you need to probably need to play like four squad battle games five squad battle games in a week and you get 12 extra thousand coins as you can see uh in the rewards and those packs are tradable as well which in turn you can sell those tradable gold cards for good coins and right away that's good stuff because outside of rivals there's no way to get like packs tradable except for when you are literally taking ultimate packs from champs or other packs from champs it's the only other way and that's not even like a you know you don't really get too many packs from champs unless you use all your champs collectibles on the packs which again not is really not the best idea because uh then you're not able to you know get better cards or, or players on your team right it's probably one of the better ways to do it but anyway uh I would say that squad battles is very underrated and very important to get started on how to become a millionaire in a hut. It's very basic. You only play a few games and it's not really going to be so taxing on you. It's really not. You, you're going to have pro one and if you get all the way up to elite three, you get to the 14k and the packs even get better as well. And again, these aren't even bad packs. And as a matter of fact, even pro two is not bad. 10k solid and those packs aren't bad at all. And pro three is, is even decent. Elite pack, elite, it's just not bad at all. 7.5k, and along with the coins you're getting from just playing the game, that's really solid. IMO, but I said IMO in real life. That's when you really know there's problems, but in my opinion, uh, yeah, that's that squad battles right there. Let's move on to other important things to notice, okay? So, challenges are not very viable when it comes to making coins, as you can see. I mean, I mean, what are you getting from this? You're getting 225 coins. Is that something that is worth your time? No, it's not. So don't worry worry about challenges for coins. Not really a very effective way to make coins. Uh, but let's move on to the next way to actually make proper coins, okay? So the way to do that now uh, is going to be through Rivals, okay? So Rivals is probably one of the easier ways as well. Right up there with Squad Battles. But Hut Rivals is a thing where you can literally play Rivals. And it's seven days. It's run Tuesday to Tuesday. 5 p.m. ends and Wednesday 5 p.m. you get your rewards and your three options are if you unless at least get a bronze I believe rating will be at least tradable or untradable or coins okay so I'm in division one right now uh, as you can see and if you go to the rewards right now so every tier there's different rewards so right now uh, you can see in bronze I have the jumbo premium player pack uh, or two or, and that's it there's no other option silver that you start getting the options and you get jumbo nhl player packs or nhl player packs or you get untradeable which is double the packs or you could take coin which is forty five thousand coins guaranteed nothing nothing around that it's forty five thousand coins guaranteed to you or if you go up to gold you can get you know these packs the jumbo nhl player packs or jumbo elite packs again and even taking the tradable packs you could sell these gold cards for value so it's still that's another way as well it really it's not not viable at all i think it's definitely a very very effective way or i can end up taking 55k and if you're looking for a specific card you're targeting certain cards i would say the smartest thing to do is make sure you take coins because 
Oh, I want this MSP. I'm, I'm 50k short. Well, you play one week arrivals. You got it. You're going to have an MSP card by just that way. I mean, it's, it's really, really effective. And I think that it's important uh, to to do that. I, I really do. So 55k is, is a good viable way to make coins just through rivals. Taking the coin reward. Uh, definitely don't take untradeable. If you're, again, if you're just specifically looking to make coins, okay? Because taking untradeable doesn't work because you can't trade the untradeables in for tradable cards, unfortunately. Yeah, you can make other cards like MSPs and whatever untradeable, but you can't get that value that you might be looking for with untradeable. So either tradable or coins, I'd recommend coins because it guarantees you what you're getting at least. No question about it. Up to platinum, we get up to 67k. Diamond, this is Division 1, 80k. Ultimately, you get 100,000 coins guaranteed. So... I mean, it all just depends how you're feeling. I mean, I think it's really, really good uh, to have these options, and it's it's very viable. So that's Rivals. Uh, the next thing that I would talk about on how to make coins and how to become a millionaire, and it goes really to Hut Champs. So Hut Champs looks like this. So, I mean, the Hut Champs rewards aren't as good as last year when it comes to just the overall ranks. So you get mostly paid-in collectibles. So, um, for instance, let's say you finish with around seven wins right you get an nhl player pack which is a tradable pack which is nice i mean you could get something good in there and sell it and make good coins but realistically if you get the three hot champ collectibles uh or four collectibles nine wins or even five which is two hot champ collectibles there are sets here for you that you can turn into tradable packs okay so and that's in turn value in coins so the hot champ sets here for instance so right here you can turn them in and that's a power collectible or a elite pack. So if you got two collectibles, you could make an elite pack or you make a mega player pack or a jumbo elite pack for two as well. A jumbo elite player pack, I believe, is uh, 1180 pluses as well. So that would be the, the nine win mark, I believe. Uh, and then ultimate pack is only four. So ultimate packs are 2080 pluses. Ultimate choice packs are five collectibles you have to end up trading in, which the ultimate choice packs are better than ultimate packs. That's something to keep in mind as well. So if you're one away and you feel like, you know what, let me just open the ultimate. I'd wait for the ultimate choice pack because they are definitely better. The final round is 583 pluses, which is pretty good value, especially early on in the year. So definitely consider that. But another way to make coins is by trading in your collectibles specifically just for packs because uh, you're going to be able to get gold cards from that that you know they, they can sell for a decent amount they really can if you get like that one lucky pull a7 crosby a6 kutrov you never know that could be worth a lot especially that one week where it's a good event which i'll get into that in a second as well but in general in general these sets can be valuable the sad part is that there's a cooldown on the uh on, on the packs i believe some of the expensive ones like the ultimate choice pack and the ultimate packs but still in general it has good value and it's uh, worth doing, I would say. So Hot Champs is another option uh, to make coins. I mean, it's just really about taking, taking you know, advantage of what this game is being, you know, handed to you. I'm not going to mention Rush as well, guys, in this video because Hot Rush, you don't really get coins. We've already seen the meme. You get 750 coins for your max tier. What are you getting? 2K from Rush? I mean, you could, I guess, if you want, but it's not really a lot. You're not, it's not really like a big coin making method is Hot Rush. So don't worry about that too much. So that was Hot Champs and Rivals. And uh, the other thing I want to talk about now, okay, the next thing I want to talk about, which is a very interesting one. So let's go to the set section, okay? So if you see in the Halloween Rivals event, right? So to make some of these cards, so you see the 91 overall Crosby, and you can see the requirements, 87 plus, 86 plus, 85 plus, and 85 plus, okay? 87, 86, and 85 gold cards are so, so valuable. If you pull an 85, 87, 86, even if they're gold, it doesn't matter because that's still great, great value. There's not a, t a ton of cards that are 87 plus right now, so they all go for a pretty good amount of coins. So I would say, especially before a new event uh, drops, I would stock up on some 86s or 85s at least. Even if, I know not everybody can you know have a, a fortune of coins. Even even let's just just say uh, let's say like the, the, the lower end guys that is. So like Bennington, let's just say, stock up on like 84s, 83s even, because when the when the event first drops, as long as they keep doing the same event system, these overalls will be valuable a lot, like very, very valuable. I know some people that before this event came out, knew that because it got leaked, obviously, they were able to make a ton of coins by just doing that, by literally just having all these gold cards. And once the sets got released, everyone was like, 
you know, let's just say uh, Hughes. Oh my God, oh my God, I, I need 85s, I need 85s, I need 4s. They go for so much. They go for so much because everyone wants the new MSP cards. So that's why it's very, very important to keep that in mind as well. So uh, these cards can make you a lot of coins. The 82s, the, sorry, not the 82s, mostly the 83s, 84s, 85s, 86s, and 87s. Because this event didn't have 80 pluses be a thing. This event really 80 to 82 didn't really mean anything. Last event, 80s, you could get an MSP card, the highest tier. Will they do that again? I don't know. That's why I think holding on to your 80 pluses, tradable as well, can be very, very effective also. Because if you hold on to your 80s that are tradable, or 81s or 82s that are tradable, who knows? Who's to say they don't drop sets where it's like trade in 280, 81 pluses or something, and you get an MSP 92 card. You never know. You don't know. That's why it's very important to consider stocking up on these cards right before a new event drops, because usually they're at their lowest value. And then also, when the event drops, you can make a lot of, a lot of coins. So... That's just a one way to make coins. It's through that way. It's through events, all right? So keep that in mind. It's just another way. Now, moving on uh, to the next one here. And the next one is going to be one of the most famous ones. I mean, we always talk about it. The auction house, all right? The auction house. And what do I mean by the auction house? Henrik, what do you mean by the auction house? Well, if you go to the marketplace here, and I have 336K, as you can see. I go to the buy now maximum right here. Uh... You go here, all right, and I, I could put like, it doesn't really matter. It could be, I could put any amount, right? For instance, um, I'll make sure they're gold cards at least, right? That's what I'm looking for. Uh, you want to go to the 59th minute here of the auction house. And one thing about this method is you have to study the market and kind of know what cards are going for what. Because if you see a card that you think, oh, this could be a steal and it's not, well, you just lost coins and you're going to lose a lot of coins because of tax as well. So definitely make sure that uh, you don't really go crazy and buy every card you see that you think is a cheap steal because, I mean, not every card is going to be a steal that you see. So keep that in mind as well. But when it comes to the 59th minute, uh, there's just a really, really good chance of getting good cards. I remember back in NHL 19, I got, I believe it was an international player of the game, Sidney Crosby card for a very, very cheap value. So that was really huge for me at the time. I believe I bought for like 500 castle for like 800 K. So, I mean, that could be really, really life changing. Maybe not life changing, but not changing, I guess, year for you. Uh, once you get that big, big steal. Cause even, even if you get one, like if you get that card that someone misplaces a primetime McDavid, you know, McDavid, like, uh, I don't know, 91 overall. And I put him up for 50 K instead of, I don't know, whatever. What was it for like 30 K instead of 300 K stuff like that. You know what I mean? That can make the world of difference. All right. So we're at the 59th minute now. And the way to really look at this is you could just press uh, place bid and then go back on the card and you see the fresh uh, fresh cards come up. Uh, you can do anything. So, I mean, place the bid and then go back out and then it refreshes the market every time. You see the, the cards go up before anyone else sees them. Uh, if, if you're sitting on the market, they won't update right away unless you do the place bid. So, Eddie O, 25K, is that a steal? I don't know. I don't know the market that well. But, you know, I mean, you'll see. And you'll see a lot as well. If cards are definitely steals, you'll see these cards getting bought up right away. Like, uh, if I if that Eddie was a steal, because other people are doing this. This is not like a crazy idea. People have been doing this for a very long time. It's called just working the market and just learning how much things are going to go for. And you can just see, you know, you can see in advance how much something's going for and exactly if it's a steal or not, right? Like, if I'm like, oh, it's Demco, 5K, it's a steal, you know, then you can buy it and you can relist it. So that's just a way to look at it. Uh, it's definitely time consuming. You gotta have patience with this one for sure. It's not one that is just for everyone. I mean, I, I'm not one that wants to sit on the market and grind it. Not like any, not anymore at least. I used to, but not anymore. But it definitely can make you coins. And it's probably the most honestly rewarding one because you can get a lot of coins quick if you get a really lucky night where people just listen cards for just a very, very low amount. So McDavid, 111K. Is that a good deal? I don't know. It looks decent. Is it? I don't know. 111k. What? What's he? What's the cheapest up for right now? That's a very good deal. You could easily, you could easily sell that McDavid for for more easily. I could buy that McDavid right now and I could list him and I could sell him for probably at least a hundred like thirty overnight, which is like you know it's, it's little by little profit, you know, little by little profit. It's not going to be a home run every time, but you can really accumulate coins by doing that. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed this video though. If you did. Leave a like, subscribe. If you're new to the channel here, follow me on Twitch, Henrik, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Henrik at 3Es, and join the Discord, talk to me, follow and subscribers of the channel. As always, much love. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps, and this should definitely help you become a hot millionaire in the near future. I will see you all in the next video.